A few weeks ago, we began a CSS series starting each episode by asking, what's the best way to overwrite an Oracle delivered fluid CSS style? And like I've said in each video in this series, this is such a great question because there are a handful of solutions. Now, I do believe there is a best way, and I'm going to save the best for last. First, I want to cover some alternatives. Why? Just in case. Just in case you have an older tools release or for some reason the best way isn't the right way for you and your situation. Okay, here are the three options I want to discuss. First, we can customize it. Second, we can use the company info section. And third, oh wait, I'm going to save that one till last. All of these solutions though require a style sheet. So let's start there. Let's create a style sheet for our custom CSS. Oh, and where did our custom CSS come from? And what is the purpose of our CSS? In a prior episode, we wrote some CSS to change the color of the primary button, you know, the primary button on a page from either green on older fluid releases or blue as an 858 to a different color. In this case, we chose orange. And so that's our starting point. So here, I have the style sheet on my screen. So I'm going to copy that in an application designer. I'm going to create a new style sheet. This is going to be a free form sub style sheet. I'll paste my CSS in here and we need to, of course, name it. So I'll give this one the name. How about we'll start with a site specific prefix, JSM. How about fluid override? And we'll end with the suffix FF, FF for free form, meaning this is a free form style sheet versus the other types of style sheets that are available. Okay, now this is going to be a customization. So here's what we're going to do. If we look at an Oracle delivered page, let's go with, oh, you know, MyForms. MyForms happens to be part of Enterprise Components, so it should be there in your database. If you want to follow along and do the same thing I'm doing, the CSS that I just pasted into Application Designer, we'll include a link to that in the video description so you can download that and walk along with us. So I can see the button here, and if I open up the source view in my browser inspector tools, I can see that there is a style sheet here, PS style def F mode. Every fluid component includes PS style def F mode. So if I want to, I can use that as my carrier to inject additional CSS. So I'm going to open that style sheet here, PS style def F mode, and insert my new custom style sheet. So insert sub style sheet, freeform sub style sheet, JSM fluid overrides. Okay, now it does show at the top here, but if we look at the order, it's actually at the bottom of the order. On the fixed, on the, this side is showing us the, the alphabetical listing, whereas on the other, which is more important to me, I think, is the order. So that we can see that, yes, in fact, our style sheet is injected last, which means that it will be the, it will override any Oracle delivered style. So I'll press the save button and let's reload. And it did in fact change our styles just as we expected. Now, if we look at the downloaded files, we can see the PS style def F mode. Notice you don't see our freeform sub style sheet because it's actually embedded in the Oracle delivered style sheet now. Again, this is a customization. So this is not my first tool that I'm going to reach for, but it is a tool. So I want you to be aware of it. Now, even though it's a customization, I would say it's a pretty lightweight customization. It's an Oracle delivered style sheet. We have changed the Oracle delivered style sheet, but we did it in what I call the right way, meaning we took our styles, put them in a separate style sheet so that after upgrade time, anytime you apply people tools maintenance, you could inject, insert that one row, just that one line back in here with our changes. Easy modification to maintain. Okay, now what would be some configuration alternatives? Well, let's see, I'm going to keep this open for testing purposes. Oh, let's undo as well. Let's see, it's reset. Now let's try a configuration alternative. Using the attribute based branding module that was included with people tools in an earlier release of people tools. By the way, the attribute based branding module started as classic only. I believe it was 854. Even though fluid was out, the attribute based branding module was classic only. So if you're on an older tools release that has fluid and you're looking for a way to 
to change the appearance of PeopleSoft pages, you might be using the customization alternative. If you're on a later tools release that does support Fluid, specifically the one we're going to look at right now is the company info. Then we can use company info to insert a style sheet into all Oracle delivered Fluid pages. So in the navigator here in a new window, I will go to, well, here, let's start at the top, People Tools. portal, branding, and then, well, normally we'd start from assemble themes. I'll, I'll just walk you through what I normally do, but I'm going to tell you right now. For convenience, we're going to customize the Oracle delivered theme. <laughs> That's not configuration, is it? No, it's not. In our branding course, we do talk about, we teach you how to, we show you how to clone the Oracle delivered theme so that you are creating your own theme so that it is a configuration, not a customization. But in this case here, just to keep it simple, since we all have the same delivered themes, I'm going to use the Oracle delivered theme here rather than cloning, just in the interest of time. Okay, great. So I can see there's an Oracle delivered theme called Default Theme Fluid. Now what I would do and what we teach in the branding course is we would use Save As. So we'd save as to create our own, but we can see here there's a home page header. And so from the home page header, which also has a save as, define headers and footers. We can see the company info section. Oh, by the way, there's the save as. So if I were doing this as a configuration, I would save as the Oracle delivered default header fluid and then make the changes that I desire. In this case, the company info. Now you can see on my screen, I have a company info leaf in this tree. If you do not see the company info leaf in your tree, there might be two reasons. One is you're on an older tools release that doesn't support company info. Or you're logged in as a user that does not have the company info administrator role. So first thing I would do is go to my security settings and make sure that I have the role company info administrator. If you do not see the company info administrator role available, well, then you probably have an older tools release that does not support company info. Anyway, with company info, I'm going to click on additional information, enable the company banner area, which gives me the rich text editor, the CK editor that was included in an earlier release of people tools to allow us to supply rich text on PeopleSoft components and pages. Now, almost every time you see the CK editor, every time you see the rich text editor, the source button will be missing. The source button is there by default, but most PeopleSoft components have hidden the source button because it's kind of considered a a security risk. See, anybody with access to source could then inject any sort of HTML JavaScript and download and ActiveX components, etc., which makes this, yes, definitely a security vulnerability, which is why we have the company info administrator role to protect us and our users. We might have somebody who has access to branding, but we don't want them to have access to the view source here. I love the source button. And with the source button, what that's going to allow me to do is inject HTML. I'll be able to inject a style sheet. And what I want you to see here is in my style sheet, I'm using some meta HTML here, a, a meta HTML sequence to ask PeopleSoft to look for a style sheet by name in the people tools metadata, save it into the cache directory, and then return the URL that I can then use here in this HTML. You notice by the way that I used an ID, we don't need to use an ID. I did that so that you and I can find it in the HTML for testing purposes. That's really the only reason I have the ID there. Okay, so I'll copy that, I'll paste it, and now we need the style sheet name. Let's see, it is called JSM Fluid Override. Let's do a save as. So we can copy to make sure there aren't any typos. And let's see, let's put that in here. Let's say OK and save. OK, now let's see, did it, did it refresh? Did it work? Mm, let's try to save again. There we go. Interesting. Interesting. Did you see, I'm sure I hit that save button twice. Well, anyway, there it is. <laughs> There's the change styles. OK. Why would I take this approach? See, there's one more approach I want to show you, and it's the approach that I recommend. That's coming up next. But first off, why this approach? Why the company info? It seems a little bit awkward, isn't it? Using it to inject CSS. Well, the thing about the company info is that it's one section in branding that exists in both classic and fluid. 
that's unique, that's different. See, most of the branding features in the branding module are either classic or fluid. We actually brand classic and fluid completely differently, and that makes sense, because classic and fluid both have different HTML, so they're going to require different styling. But the company info, that one section allowing us to insert information, for example, what's the current database name? What's the logged in user's upper ID? Things like that. We can inject them into both classic and fluid from one location, and that allows us to inject CSS from one location. Now, I don't know that I would do that. I just want you to be aware of it. And the reason I say I don't think I would do that is because the CSS that I use for fluid is likely to be very different from the CSS that I use with classic. Plus, the injection is into the header. You know what? Let's try it. Let's try it. I'm actually kind of curious. Does it inject into just the header or does it inject into the header and the content area? Let's try it out. Let's see. Let's reload this since it's now using the new company info as updated. And that was def well, what's the name of it? Default header fluid. And if we inspect we should see our style sheet here. Yeah, perfect. Being injected into both classic and fluid. That's awesome, isn't it? But here's the question. Is it injecting at just the header level because that's where the company info is, or is it actually injecting into the transaction? Hmm. Now, if our purpose is to style the header, this is awesome. It's going to work. Let's check the transaction. I have this really cool, refreshable URL. It's going to open this transaction so that we can see it here. It's going to open the level zero key, but here, let's make it just the content, not the portal. And now, is that style sheet in the list? No, it's not. No, it's not. Interesting, huh? There's actually a different component. If you want to override the Oracle delivered CSS for classic, the component that I would use is the branding system options, which has this additional style sheets global section where you and I can inject CSS into components at the global level. The company info just allows us to inject CSS at the header level. Okay, great. Now I told you there's one way that I would do this that targets specifically fluid. It's a configuration alternative. I've saved it for last. We're going to take the same approach, though. We're going to start with the Oracle Delivered theme, which normally, and this is what I recommend, that you clone the Oracle Delivered theme. Let's go to Assemble Themes, and let's open the default theme fluid. Oh, by the way, real quickly, this is still here, isn't it? Let's make that go away so that it's not interfering with our, with our theme configuration. Okay, so branding, define headers and footers, and let's search for the default header fluid, the company info, additional options. Let's get rid of this. We'll save it, and then just, just in case, just in case, now we'll turn it off. I want to make sure there are no references to that HTML anywhere, that CSS anywhere. Okay, great. We can see that the style is now reset, and if we look here at our style sheets, it's not there. Perfect. Okay, good. Okay, so now let's go to Assemble Themes, and at the very bottom here, you see the Global Style Override Style Sheets. Let's look for a style sheet. That's not a very helpful search. There are 300 there. Let's try Type Ahead. JSM. There it is, JSM Fluid Override FF. Now, interesting, I'm going to make you aware of this. I have at times typed in my own personal style sheet that I've created that Oracle doesn't know anything about, and it doesn't show in the search, and it doesn't show in the prompt, that, none the type ahead. Here's what I do in that circumstance. The style sheet really exists, but for some reason, Assemble Themes isn't showing it. I copy the name out of Application Designer, so I make sure that it's spelled correctly. I paste it here, even though it's not listed in the prompt, and I save anyway. Okay, let's see. Now, I'm curious, is it going to work or do we have to actually log out and log back in? Oh, it worked. Perfect. Okay, well, let's take a look here and see, is our style sheet injected separately? Awesome. You know, let's look at that and let's look at the design here. Global override style sheet. Oh. Just the name makes so much sense. What's the point? What's the purpose? What are we trying to do here? What was the question we asked at the beginning? 
How do you, or, or even better, what's the best way to override Oracle Delivered CSS globally? What's the best way? Right here. This is the best way. The best way is to create your own style sheet with your overrides, just the fragment, just the subset of CSS that you want to override, put it in your override style sheet, and then reference it from the global override section. <laughs> Makes so much sense, doesn't it? Notice though, this only applies to Fluid. Remember, we have a different component for Classic. Now, I saved this for last. There are a couple of reasons I saved it for last. One of them is, well, because I think it's the best way, and I wanted to save the best for last. Here's the other reason. Caching. I've had a few challenges with caching where, for example, if I were to delete this and then press the Save button, hey, it may or may not delete it. In this case, it worked. Other times, I actually have to go to the web server and the app server and clear cache once, twice, three times maybe, and then see the changes take effect. So I wanted to save it for last just in case because, well, it'd be hard to test all the other options if this one was stuck, wouldn't it? With Fluid being Oracle's strategic direction, we believe Fluid is one of the most important people tools technologies to learn. And that is why we teach it several times per month. Be sure to check out our website to see when we're offering it next. Or here's an idea. Subscribe to our LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter feeds to receive updates every time we post a course. Or do you have a team that wants to learn Fluid? Give us a call. Let's get something scheduled. Now, before we go, I have a question for you. Do you have a topic you would like us to cover in a future soundbite? Let us know by sharing your idea at soundbites.jsmpros.com. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.